Hello, my name is Hormoz Shariad. I want to teach you about how to reach out to Muslims. You know, I was born as a Muslim myself for many years, followed Islam very closely. And at my teenage years, I started asking questions. Is Islam true or not? Especially after the revolution. I said, this Islam internally is not true because it hasn't done anything for me. I don't experience the presence of God and it hasn't changed me, but externally, Islam is taking over the world, so God must be with it. It took me to a journey of comparing Islam and Christianity. I read Quran one more time, I read the Bible, and the more I read, I realized these two books and these two religions and system of beliefs don't match. You know, sometimes people believe all religions are the same, and if you really study them, they converge. The more I studied, I realized as a Muslim, these two both cannot be true. I went through a uh, spiritual journey of several months until I realized I went to a church and I realized how simple the message of the gospel is and how powerful. One day I realized the message is simple. You're sinful, God loves you, and God is after you, and he will change your life. When I heard that message, I tried it. I said, Jesus, if you are the savior, I want to experience you. I want to experience change. I want to experience peace and joy in the presence of God. And I prayed, and Jesus changed my life. At that time, I just woke up to this thing because I had tried to change and I couldn't. I realized this message has changed me from inside out and something in me is working to day by day to change me. I was so excited. My marriage was saved. I was a changed person. And I said this, and I hope you feel the same. I said, this simple message changes lives, saves families, saves marriages, and it can also save even nations and societies. And I will be very selfish if I kept this message to myself. I started sharing the gospel with others, and I hope you feel the same. Folks, we have the answer to man's problems, to marriage problems, to personal problems, to addictions, to society problems. We have to believe we have the answer and we should feel selfish if we don't share the gospel. Now, how do you share the gospel with Muslims? I wanna give you a recipe to reach Muslims. A recipe is 2 Timothy 1:7. For God has not given us the spirit of fear, but the power, love, and sound mind. I consider this a, a way to share the gospel with Muslims. Why? Because it says that so has it given us the spirit of fear. The thumbprint of Islam is fear, is hatred, is violence. You know, I'm not bad-mouthing Islam and Muslims. I, I was a Muslim and I love Muslims. I have given my life to them, but you have to be truthful. And it's not because of what radical Islam is doing that I call Islam the spirit of Islam, the spirit of fear, the spirit of violence and hatred. It's not because of all the things happening. I'm saying it because if you look in Quran, you find this in many, 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 many verses. And if you look at the example of Prophet Muhammad, you see that fear and violence and hatred is, was a part of his life. So let's be realistic. And when in your reali realistic, you can, now you can tell the truth with love. Now, how do you reach Muslims? The spirit of fear, God has not given us, but he has given us the spirit of what? L number one, he has given us the spirit of power. Power, the gospel is powerful. We have to believe. How do, you, how, do you, how do you break this spirit of fear? With, with power. Romans 1.16, Paul says, I'm not ashamed of the gospel because it has the power to, for salvation to those who believe. It has the power to change people's lives. We have to believe. You know, in the West, we have heard the gospel so many times. It has become common to us. We, we forget how powerful that simple message is to change lives. We have to believe in its power. We have to believe that when people hear it, something happens in their lives. And when they receive it, their lives are transformed. Number two is power of changed lives. Power of changed lives. The gospel has power 
and it's evident in our changed life. So when we, we witness to people, we're not just telling them about the theology and a the philosophy and a religion. We're talking about the life change that we have experienced and it's practical. Let them see your life has changed. Let them see how you treat your wife, your spouse. Let them see how you feel you believe it about God, how you treat others. It's a changed life. The problem, I always say this, the number one cause of people coming to Christ is me. And the number one of hindering people, why, why people are not coming to Christ is me and you. We can be a cause or we, or we can be a detriment. It's our attitudes, it's our lifestyle. So it's not the matter of battles of ideas, it's a battle of spirits, battle of hearts, battle of commitments. Our changed life has power. We have to tell the truth, but we have to live the truth. Number three in power to break the spirit of Islam is the signs and wonders. God is doing it. That's not something we come up with. That, that, that's out of our control. But God is doing it. God is appearing to Muslims with visions and dreams. It's so common. You ask Muslims, they, sometimes they believe more than we believe in signs, wonders, and miracles. And they believe Jesus is a healer and he heals them. So God is with us. When we say gospel is powerful and we break the power of fear, the power of Islam with, with our, our message, that's what I mean. The message is powerful, but God himself is also powerful and is breaking the spirit of Islam and setting the captives free. For Muslims, Jesus, a miracle worker, is normal. I don't know about your theology. I'm not talking about theology. I am reporting to you. Jesus is with us. He is appearing to them. And even though they could die to say, I saw Jesus, they're saying it, that Jesus appeared to me. He talked to me. He healed me. He changed me. So we got to go with power to share the gospel. Believe. If you want to share the gospel with Muslims, you have to believe in the power that you have, the power of the gospel that you have, and that Jesus is with you. And when you share the gospel, you got to believe that Jesus will do signs and wonders through you. I say believe. I don't say depend. I say believe because it's out of our hand. We can just proclaim. But Many times, Jesus is faithful. Number two, so recipe to share the gospel with Muslims. Number one is with power, which is the gospel. And number two is with love. The love is the greatest power we have. The love overcomes fear. The Bible says perfect love casts us fear. And we are, we are confronting a, a spirit of fear. And it's so interesting, the Bible talks about Perfect love casts out. That, that, that's a spiritual warfare word. Cast out fear. So in that spiritual warfare, we have the love of God, which is powerful to break the spirit of fear. Most Muslims are slaves to that fear. I've seen many, many times. I've shared the gospel with, with many Muslims. And I've seen many, many times that these Muslims are ready to receive Christ they are convinced Jesus is the way and they want to believe in Christ and then suddenly a spirit of fear comes upon them. Oh, I'm afraid of Allah. Oh, what, what God do, do, do to, to me? What men will say about me? What does the government do? So it, it's such a fear. For, I, I, many times I take their hands to pray for them to come to Christ and I open my eyes and I see as they are praying to receive Christ, I see their knees shaking out of fear. I, this young man came to Christ in our church and, and I was baptizing him and I never forget I said tell me how you came to Christ what attracted to you to Christianity like many 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 Muslims they say the same thing like this young man it was love that attracted me to Jesus and I said so tell me he said well I, I, I wanted to come to church but there was a spirit of fear I couldn't every morning every Sunday I wanted to come a fear would overcome me and many times I would come at the your street and look at the church, but I couldn't get in. Something would come. And after a few months, I had the courage to walk in and have a part in the service. He said, it was really good. And I heard your sermon. I, I participated in the worship and I went home and I fell on my face, oh, full of fear. Oh, Allah, Allah, don't, don't punish me. Don't hurt me. 
Don't bring sickness on me and my family. Don't make me go broke. I'm sorry, Allah. I went to church. I, I'm sorry. And I'm so sorry because I really enjoyed it. Muslims are touched. And even when they're touched, they're fearful. How do you overcome fear? Love. Most Muslims who come to Christ in the West, if you ask them, what caused you to walk towards Christ and accept that message? Most of them say, love of Christians. We got to break that wall. You know, love goes and love crosses boundaries. If you say love, you step forward. Otherwise, we just empty speakers if you don't cross boundaries you know god is love and he crossed the greatest boundary from heaven to earth that's the greatest widest boundary and he did that he crossed it can we cross the boundaries and touch the muslims and love them with the love of god can you walk to, to, to them don't be afraid of the how they look and with the beard or the covering of the women don't be afraid i i've talked to the Muslims in America or in the West with covering. I say, how do you feel? Listen to me. I ask him, how do you feel when you go to a store? They say, it's so hard. The heavy eyes looking at us. We know they're rejecting us. I, we know they're afraid of us. We see those eyes. We see they're, they're not eyes of love. We see their eyes. We feel the heaviness. And we, how do you feel about them? We are afraid of them. And I ask people, what do you, how do you feel about them? And they say, oh, we are afraid of them. I'm a, even Christians, I'm afraid to talk to them. That's the enemy's design. Both of them are afraid of each other and they don't talk to each other. We, as Christians, because of our love, we are going to cross that boundary. We will connect with them and love them and share God's goodness with them. Would you do that? Love crosses Boundaries. Number four, love is the greatest power. Greatest power. You know, Allah has 99 names. Not one is love. So the love we have is the greatest power. You know, when, when, you, when you bring the Bible, they say, oh yeah, you have the Bible? We have the Quran. You say about Jesus, oh, that's your prophet? We have a better one. Muhammad. But when you bring out the love of God towards us and our love towards them, the enemy panics. What are we going to do? Because there is no love in Islam. Power of love. Go with love. If you don't love Muslims, don't go. You know, the, the problem in the West is not, it's not the lack of knowledge. It's a lack of love. We don't love them. We are afraid of them. If you're afraid, may, may I say this, if you're afraid of Muslims or you don't like them, you hate them, may I say you have submitted to the spirit of Islam because the spirit of Islam is fear and hatred and you got it. You're fear the, afraid of them and you hate them or you don't like them. That's the same spirit. You are in control and you need to pray and we need to pray, God, save me, free me from that spirit. If you have hatred toward Muslims or fearful, God set me free. That's not your heart. You love the world. You love the 1.6 billion. You love these people. You died for them. God, I'm sorry I don't have your heart. God, change me. I say I love you. If I love you, I want to have your heart. I want to have your mind. I want to, I want to know what you're doing. I want, to, I want to be an instrument in your hand, Lord. Would you pray? It's not just the knowledge. You have to have the heart. You have to have the heart of God and the mind of God to do the will of God. With power, with love, and with sound mind. With sound mind. How, what does the sound mind mean? It means you have to be wise. Many times we, we break the bridges we are too harsh. We attack Islam. And the walls go up. Even if the person is not committed Muslim, they, they just defend themselves. We have to be wise. We have to have the right strategy. We have to work where God is working. But to having the uh, right strategy, let me give you a few things that we make in the West, we make mistakes. There are several things they think about Islam. Uh, Islam thinks about Christianity. Oh, yeah, they believe in three gods. Or 
they're blasphemers. They raised Jesus, a man, to be God. So this is what I do. When I talk to a Muslim, before, before they bring it up, I bring it up. Before they say God is one, I say, hey, I believe God is one. Really? You're a Christian? You believe in God? So, yes. Before they say it, I say, God is one. And before they say it, I say, it is a blasphemy to raise up a common man to be God. Oh, who, so what do you think about Jesus? I said, Jesus is not a man who became a God. And we don't believe he was a man that, that we, we love him so much we think he's God. No, when we go to the Old Testament, when we go to God's promises, it's God who came after us. I'm going to get to that just a little bit later. It's a simple message of how to share the gospel with them. But use the right strategy. And one strategy is uh, don't argue. Don't argue. Islam is not a matter of thinking. Muslims are not allowed to think, are not allowed to question their faith. It's when they get to that, they panic. What I do instead of a battle of minds, I go for the heart. I go for the thirst they have for peace, for joy, and for God himself. Another thing I say, tell them, because they think, oh, I'm a Christian, I try to be, make him a Christian. Uh, up front, I'm not here to make you a Christian. Relax. Let's learn about each other's faith. I want to hear about yours, and I want to share, so we can know about each other. At, at that spirit of relaxation, they are more open to the gospel than, oh, this Christian, or this pastor, or, oh, they want to get me to church, oh, they want to make you Christian. Make them relaxed. Now, working where the Holy Spirit is working, Holy Spirit is working in the hearts of Muslims. Not all of them are radicals. Radical Muslims are just small percentage of Muslims. They're true Muslims, by the way. They're committed Muslims. We call them radical, but it's better to call them committed. True Muslims are radicals because the Quran is radical. Then most of Muslims are moderate. They are like lukewarm, if you bring it to Christianity, lukewarm Muslims, nominal Muslims. There are Muslims by name, they're not truly truly following Islam. If they were truly following Islam, they would be the radicals, I assure you. But then there are third kind. These are people who have kind of rejected Islam in their heart and Islam is a non-issue for them. They have become a lot secular and they say Islam is not for me or I have my own kind of Islam, I believe, in my heart. And there are a growing number of them. Listen, there are a growing number of Muslim people who are becoming militant against Islam. These are Muslims by name, but they're saying Islam is not the way. Islam is the problem. I need to get rid of Islam, not just in my life, but in my country. Those numbers are growing. So you have to find out what kind of Muslim are you talking to and work accordingly. Never bring Christianity and Islam face to face. Never bring Jesus and Muhammad face to face. Actually, these are the lines of thinking that I do when I preach, when I share the gospel. I say, Christianity is not a religion. If you, that's a good, good sentence. If you're looking for a religion, Islam, what you have is good, but it hasn't done anything for you. And another line, don't become, Christ, don't become a religious Christian, I tell them. What, they say? I said, no, don't become a religious Christian. Christianity as a religion is really hard, actually impossible. In, in Islam, you may have to pray five times a day, but then in Christianity, you have to pray all the time. And even if you think bad thoughts, you, the, the God has, you have sinned in your mind. So it, it is really hard. So wh why do you say that? Because Jesus did not come to bring us a new religion. He came to give us salvation. And this is my invitation. If you're after religion, which really doesn't do any good for you, it just gives you some rules, then there are so many. Go, go choose one. If you're looking for a prophet or a messenger in, uh, in Muslims believe, I mean the word prophet and the messengers are, this, are the same. If, you, if you're looking for messengers, there's so many messengers. But what does message do for you? But when you're ready for a savior, Jesus is there. Jesus is there. He's the only one who said, I'm the savior of the world. He never said, I am here to bring you a new religion. And be creative. Be creative. 
know how to do it. I'm going to share a very short way of how I shared the gospel at the <coughs> chalkboard, blackboard here. I, I use a visual thing, and people, there are many ways to do it. Of course, I use it this way because it matches their belief system, and I will tell you why. This is what I draw. I say there is heaven and there is earth, and in heaven, God created man, and I always draw God with a big heart, which reminds him that God is love. Remember, in Islam, God is not love. And God is love, and he created man to be with him and have fellowship with him. And when he was with God, there was no suffering, there was no death, there was no sickness, there was no uh, uh, desperation, no addiction, no depression. Man had everything because God gave him everything. But then, because God loves us, he gave us a choice. If we don't give a person a choice, then you really don't love them. If you put them in a room and lock the door and say, I love you and you have to love me, that's not a kind of love. Love by force is not love. So God gave human beings a choice. He said, you can stay here, you will have eternal life, you won't have to get sick, everything you need will be here and you will have a relationship with me, but it's not by force. You can, this is an exit door and you can get out. The exit door was called the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. So there were many trees, but that was the exit door. And one day human beings say, well, I want to get out of this relationship, even though I have everything. And that's when human beings fell from the presence of God. And that's we are here. We are on earth. We are not in heaven. We are on earth. And this is a very important thing to, to mention, that when human beings separated from God, we became miserable because we were, we were joyful when we were with God. Now we are not joyful. We, we had eternal life. Now we don't have. And so we became miserable and we made our families miserable and we made our society miserable. The reason there's so much suffering in this world is because of you and me. See, that's a different theology because in Islamic theology, the, God is the source of evil on earth. He's making the bad things happen to people. And in Christian theology, that's not true. It, it is our, our fault. He actually, he is our savior. So make it clear, the reason we are suffering, you are, our, our suffering, the reason the world is like this because of our sin, our separation from God. Now, human beings realized, I need to get back. And God sent some prophets, and humans also created their own religions to try to go to the right direction. This is like a ladder towards God. It's, there's a good things. Religions are good things. Philosophy are good things. Uh, that they're just showing us a way how to get back to God. They're good, but they're not enough. They, your religion may be better than mine and have better things, but none of us can get back to God. And I ask them, have you ever done perfectly in, in your own belief? I don't say about Christianity, about your own belief. Oh, well, I, I, don't, I don't believe in, uh, I have my own belief. Okay, according to your own belief, have you ever been perfect all the time? No, nobody is perfect. You're right. Neither am I, neither you. So all of us are, are not perfect. To be with God, you have to be perfect. And now, because you and I are not perfect, none of us can reach God. Even if I try our best, we can never be perfect. So we can never reach God. So religions are good, but they're not enough. They did take us to, to God. So here, question, God is love. And he, saw our, he sees our suffering. If you see somebody who you love is suffering, would you do something for them? Oh, of course. That's, that's the meaning of love. If your child was lost, would you go out and try to find him? Yes, I would. So do you think God's love is less than you and me? You think our standard is higher? If you and me as loving people would do that to people who we love, don't you think God would do the same? Yes, God is better than us, not worse than you and me. And God said it and he did it. He said, you guys, I love you. I see your suffering. I, I know your depression. 
I know your loneliness, but I love you. And, and you can't get back to me through religion. But so let me do something. Let me come down. And God, as he promised, he said, I'm the spirit, but I can put on flesh of man. I can become like a man. And I will. And I, I will come. And I will not come to give you a religion, but I give you a savior. I'm not going to give you a prophet, but a savior. Jesus was not a prophet, was a savior. If you're looking for prophets, there's so many out there, but none of them, they're good, but they're, none of them will get us to God because you and me are perfect. It's not the problem of the religions. It's my, our problem, your problem, my problem. And because of that, God so loved us that he said, I will send you a savior. You and me need a savior. We don't need a religion. We know we are miserable. We don't need anybody come and tell us, oh, you're, you're bad, you're bad, you're bad. We know. We don't need that. We need somebody to can come and, and save us. God loves you and wants to change your life today. See, that's another thing. In Islam, it's always, oh, be good, be good. Maybe someday, God willing, God will accept you even in heaven. Beautiful thing about the message of Christ is for now, for today. Salvation is for today. So I boldly proclaim that, that this is for now. If today, if now you receive that message, now your life will be changed. God will come into your life. Your heart will be changed. Peace and joy will come. Are you ready to do that? And I use Ephesians many times, Ephesians chapter 1, verse 13 for an invitation. I said, Let, let's read this verse. It says, when you heard the gospel. Did you hear the gospel? This, this is the good news. Did you hear that? Yeah, yeah, I heard that. Now, let's see if you believe that, what happens. It says, if you believe that, you will be in him. He will accept you. He will save you. And he will give you his Holy Spirit. So you have done the first part, hearing. If you do the second part, believing, here all the things will happen to you. Your salvation, the Holy Spirit will come. Do you want that? God is ready right now. He can prove it to you. That's the invitation. Do you want life right now? That's a simple way of sharing the gospel. Now I pray as we go out, we love Muslims. We share the simple message of the gospel. We all will see much fruit for the kingdom. Don't be afraid of Muslims. Love them. Let's go out and be Jesus for them. Be Jesus to them. Let's go out and be good news to them and share the good news with them. Many Many Muslims are open and ready to hear the gospel. Let's do our job. God is doing his part. Let you and me go do our part. And one thing, he promises, when you go, I'll go with you. He will come and confirm his message with signs and wonders and miracles. Just believe that and go.